Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing my in-game camera system that can take a 99 pixel by 99 pixel image purely using vanilla features. The images this data pack takes are fully textured with shadows and water transparency support. The images it outputs are in text, meaning you can theory display them anywhere you can display text, like on an item or on a mob name. However, in practice, that isn't really a great idea because the text string it outputs is too large and it breaks the game in some less than fun ways. It takes generally around 30 seconds to take a picture. Uh, some take longer, some are shorter. Uh, this scene right here is my go-to demo image because it has uh, depth, many light levels, water with depth and many light levels, as well as several unique blocks. Uh, this allows me to showcase all the features of this fairly easily, as well as get a decent test case for optimization tests. Now, this whole project actually started back in 2020. So let's step back and discuss how it worked when I initially made it for the 1.16 snapshots, and then I'll go over the changes I have made to add features and optimize it. In the first version of this project, there were two steps to the image capturing. The first step was to do a raycast to find a block, and when I found a block, I would set the color code for the block directly. Then once all the 9,802 raycasts were done, and all the colors were grabbed, I would then recursively resolve each of the 99 vertical lines individually on a sign. This took somewhere between 6 to 10 seconds to do. The reason I would do this step is so I could easily display the image anywhere, because otherwise I would have to hard code a very long command, and some places can't display non-resolved JSON text anyway, so this solved two issues at once, more or less. However, a side effect of resolving this much text on a sign is that the text generated on the sign is too large for the game to handle, and the game would not be able to save the dimension the sign was in. I do address this problem in the new version. This is also why you can't really put the images this captures on the name or lore of an item without risk of messing up something horribly. So, now on to the new version. In it, I still do a simple rakehouse to find blocks, although with some optimizations I won't really get into. Uh, also, the way I angle the raycast from the original project is completely unchanged. How I determined what angles to use for the raycast is I have two marker entities. One is the focal point, and one is the lens of sorts. The focal point entity never moves, but the lens entity moves from left to right in 99 steps, and then takes a step down back to the start of the line and does this 99 times for each of the horizontal lines. This is just an easy way to do the angles without having to do any complicated math. When the raycast hits a block, I teleport a third marker to the position where the raycast ended and get its position. Then I use that position to determine the position on the texture of the block it hit. Textures aren't in the resource pack of this. I instead converted all of the textures in the game into functions where I can input the UV value and it outputs three numbers, the R, G, and B values of the pixel it hit. Now do note I said it returns three separate values, not the hex code directly. This is because there's a new step in the image capturing process, color generation. Instead of hard coding the colors of the texture directly, I instead output an RGB color values. This allows me to change colors based on conditions dynamically. This is what enables water and shadows in a somewhat reasonable way. So on top of getting the three RGB color values, I also get the block light of the block so I can apply shadows and I can use the face of the block that was hit to add directional lighting, like in the base game. Water isn't as simple to add because water itself has a texture and lighting, so while raycasting, if I detect that I hit water, I do the same thing as I do when I hit a normal block. I get the UV and texture, and I store that as a tint to add to the block once I get the color of the texture. So once I get all those color value captured from the raycast step, I now have to convert those RGP values into colors the game can use to color text. This would be easy in most circumstances, but this is not a normal circumstance. Due to Minecraft not having any way to dynamically modify strings of text, we have to resort to hard coding, and this is sadly no exception. Now, if you know anything about how RGB color works, you may be getting rightfully a bit concerned. And your concern is warranted. There's a reason that in the readme of this pack, it says it requires 8GB of RAM to be allocated to the game. This is because packaged with this project is a 48.5MB storage file. Within this storage is all 16,777,216 RGB colors. I went over the story of the creation of this storage in another video where I talked about how we removed the number zero from Minecraft. But anyway, there are a few issues related to optimization that come up when you're using something so large, primarily being that reading it takes quite a bit of time. 
Time doesn't actually come from the command side of it. Reading color from the storage is actually fairly easy when it comes to the command side of things. The storage is formatted in a way where you can read color purely by typing in the RGB values as an NBT path. So red 100, green 64, blue 10 can be read by doing data get storage RGB RGB 100.64.10 and it returns the color 6440A. Uh, the issue is that it's just slow. So I had to optimize how often I actually read from the storage. The solution I devised was to make a cache of colors used in the current image. Every time I need to generate a color, the first thing I do is to check to see if I've used this color previously. If I have, I can just grab it from the much smaller color cache. If I haven't, then I must grab the color from the RGB storage. How I check if I have used a color previously is just a simple bit of data command trickery. In the cache, I have two values for each color, the RGB values and the actual color code itself. To check it, I mark all colors in the catch as not matching, and then I mark all colors that have the correct R value as matching, then all colors that matched red and also have the correct green value as matching, and then do that a third time for blue. If I have a value that has three matches, I can then just grab the matched color. Now, the last major change I made was removing the recursive text resolution step. I still resolved the text in a sign, but instead of doing it 99 times, I just buckled down and made a single 653 kilobyte command that has every line hard-coded. This sped up resolution from about 6 seconds to just about 100 milliseconds. Having that single command does mean I actually don't need to resolve the text on a sign, meaning the other fix I did was more or less redundant, but I did sort of fix that dimension saving issue by instead of having the text resolution sign in the overworld, I now have a dimension that only contains the sign used for text resolution and nothing else. And that is the current state of this project. I am going to go over a few future plans that I may or may not end up doing. The big one is probably implementing more complicated models. Currently, I only do cubes and water. I have a few ideas on how I'll do it, but nothing final at the moment. I also plan on adding biome-specific water, grass, and leaf tinting. This is an easy change that just requires me to figure out all the colors used for those. Uh, a feature I do want to try out is a more complicated transparency handling system. Currently I just do a basic overlay to handle water, but I think it'd be neat to be able to handle transparency properly in cases like stacked stained glass. And I think the last priority on my list is entity rendering. I think this would just be a nightmare to implement at all, and even more of a nightmare to implement optimally, in a way that doesn't slow down resolution more than it is. Well, anyway. Uh, if you want to check out the project, I'll have a link to the GitHub repository down below. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time.